Hey everyone, it's been a great time for passive income investors. Ever since the Federal Reserve increased interest rates, passive income investors can generate healthy 5% return by investing in super safe government bonds or super safe certificates of deposits at the bank. But if you want to take a little bit more risk and you want to invest in dividend stocks, I've got my top dividend stock to buy right now and I'm going to share with you in this video what that stock is. So without further ado, let's take a look at what this stock is, why I like it so much. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, my top dividend stock to buy right now is Visa. Visa has been my top dividend stock to buy all year in 2024. I made this recommendation around December 31st, December 30th, and every month I've updated you on if it's still my top stock to buy and on its performance compared with the S&P 500 dividend ETF. And still, Visa is outperforming the dividend ETF, although the outperformance has narrowed in recent weeks. The Visa return total price came in at 5.0%, 5.04% to be precise, year to date in 2024. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 ETF dividend STY index has returned 4.85%. So you will have outperformed year to date if you went with my pick instead of the SPDR spider dividend ETF. Now, earlier in the year, around February, March, Visa's outperformance was much larger and the dividend ETF has caught up in recent weeks and it's very close now, but I still think dividend will outperform, I'm sorry, Visa will outperform the dividend ETF for the remainder of the year. And one of the reasons for that is Visa stock is not trading at an expensive valuation. Visa is trading at a forward price to earnings of 24, which is fairly priced or a little bit cheap given what you're getting with Visa in terms of the competitive advantage in the business, the massive operating profitability of the business, and given the correlation you're getting with inflation and overall macroeconomic growth. Now, you might say, well, Visa's dividend yield is very skinny. It's small. It's not very large. I can get more by investing in a government bond. Why would I invest in Visa stock for the dividends? And here's a chart I'll share with you to counter that argument. In the most recent trailing 12-month period, Investors of Visa stock received a dividend per share of $1.94. But if you go back to 2015, investors in Visa stock got a dividend per share of around 40 cents, 40 cents to $2. So you're getting almost five times the dividend per share today as you would have gotten 10 years ago. So the dividend per share has increased over the last decade. And given its metrics, I'm going to share with you a little bit later. I'm confident that today's investors in Visa stock can reasonably expect this dividend per share to grow for the next decade, perhaps even longer. And that's what I like about Visa as a dividend stock, not the dividend yield, because that's not very large, but the potential for continued dividend increases over the next decade or two decades or three decades. Now, Visa can support that growing dividend given its lucrative business model that's still generating healthy growth. $34 billion in trailing 12-month revenue for Visa, and that was at $12 billion in 2015, so its revenue has almost tripled in that time, almost tripled. There's more than 4 billion Visa cards in people's wallets worldwide. And because there are so many people with a Visa card, merchants almost have to accept Visa as a payment method because otherwise they would miss out on potential customers that have Visa cards. And so that lucrative network effect has given Visa a strong competitive advantage that rivals will not dare to try and capture. 
Visa and MasterCard are on very friendly terms in terms of competitive forces, competitive dynamics. Sure, they each want to take more market share, but they don't compete against each other fiercely to try and take that market share. You don't see them racing to the bottom offering one offering better promotion than the other, one giving better deals than the other to merchants. They're basically around the same area. And so merchants just have to deal with it and they complain. They're not happy that they have to pay two, three, four percent of their sales to Visa or MasterCard, but they do it because it opens up a massive market opportunity for them to attract customers that have Visa and MasterCards in their wallets. MasterCard, by the way, I also recommend as a buy. Visa, I like better than MasterCard. I own both of them actually in my own portfolio. Visa, not only is it generating nice revenue growth, but the cash flow from operations is incredible as well at 61.15%. And perhaps more impressively, the operating profit margin at 67.1%. That's up from around 64% in 2015. And you'll scarcely find a business that generates operating profit margins anywhere near Visa. Visa is the best among all of the companies that I follow. There are a few that come close, MasterCard included. Altria Group has a very strong operating profit margin. Taiwan Semiconductor has a strong operating profit margin. NVIDIA is catching up quickly given its surging sales and profitability. But still, Visa is in the lead here in terms of this metric. And given its revenue, given the profitability, given the growth aspect, given how strongly correlated Visa's business is with macroeconomic growth, if the macroeconomic, if the economy worldwide is growing, Visa is likely to participate in that growth, regardless of what area of the market is growing, whether you have travel spending growing, whether you have food spending growing, whether you have spending increasing at restaurants or spending increasing at grocery stores. Visa is diversified and benefits from nearly every category. And so as the economy grows, Visa grows along with it. Moreover, Visa positively correlated with inflation because if you're spending $100 for the same basket of goods this year that you were spending $80 on three years ago, that's now $20 more that Visa gets to generate a 3 or 4% take from. So as inflation grows, that benefits Visa so long as inflation doesn't cause a recession or more disruption that decreases economic growth, that would not be good for Visa. When the economy is in decline or in recession, that's not good for Visa because people with less income, people with less jobs or less job opportunities, they don't spend as much money. And if you're not spending money, then Visa is not benefiting. So long as the economy is growing, that's good news for Visa. So for all of these reasons, I still like Visa as my favorite dividend stock to buy right now in June and in 2024. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.